our programming is an enormous aspect of what enables us to continue to make progress over time. Now that shock progress will happen regardless, but in order to continue moving forward, we're going to have to have some sort of strategy in place to work off of. All right, we're back in the team room, and today we are gonna talk training, more specifically programming within training, or how programming, the aspect of programming as it pertains to our training and our training goals. All right, first, the disclaimer. I am not a uh, personal trainer, I'm not a strength coach. This is information based off of, yes, years of experience and trial and error and learning from elite strength coaches and professionals, but I'm not as such. I challenge you and I recommend that you use this as a source of information not the source of information. This is a resource to take advantage of or not. I can say with certainty that programming, our programming, plays an enormous role in at least long-term progress. Out of the gate, for someone who's new to training or it's been a couple years since you've been consistently exercising and training, then just the mere fact of doing anything physical for the first time ever, or for the first time in a while, is gonna produce results. Uh, oftentimes that's referred to as shock progress, where you introduce a new stimulus to the system that is the human body, and there's an immediate response to that. And many of us out there have seen that when you begin a new physical fitness journey, the results can come really, really fast, which is great. It enables us, it increases our motivation. We're seeing progress, we're seeing results. You catch that, that addiction to what, what we're doing. But then over time, that begins to plateau. And that shock progress phase has ended. And a lot of times that's when the wheels fall off. And that's when slowly but surely, or just drastically, we go back to doing what we were doing prior. We go back to our, our more sedentary lifestyle, and then all the excess body weight comes back on, uh, the muscle disappears. We're kind of back where we started. Our programming is an enormous aspect of what enables us to continue to make progress over time. Now that shock progress will happen regardless, but in order to continue moving forward, we're going to have to have some sort of strategy in place to work off of, a baseline to work off of, to then begin making the necessary adjustments over time. Programming is, is also referred to as our macro rotation. So if you look at, say, 12 months of time, you look at a full calendar year, your program could very easily stretch that entire 12 months. Let's break something down a little bit more digestible. Let's say that we are running off of a 16-week program, okay? So a four-month window of time. That is this program from day one to the end of that of that, of that time period. Many programs include a phased model. So where you will have over 16 weeks, the first four weeks, for example, is a phase focused on this particular goal. Then you move into weeks five through eight, that's a different phase, et cetera, et cetera, over the course of 16 weeks that ultimately ends up being your program. 
macro rotation. So we're rotating from phase one to phase two to phase three to phase seven, and then program ends, and then we do whatever we do on the backside of that. We start a new program or we start back on day one of our existing program. The phased model, I would argue, is the most popular type of program. And it's certainly one that I've learned to be most beneficial for myself, which is why I've, I've used that technique now for, for many, many years. Give you guys a glimpse behind, behind my curtain, personally. My current program, which has recently changed just in the last few months, but what I'm currently on now is a, is a phase model, which consists of three phases. Strength, hypertrophy, and deloading, okay? We'll talk a little bit more in depth about strength and hypertrophy here in a second. When I say deload, what I, what I mean is you are intentionally lowering the volume and or intensity and or frequency of your physical training. You are intentionally slowing things down, intentionally taking weight off of the muscles, off of the body. It's deliberate. It's, it's, it's essentially, let's take one step backwards so we can take two steps forward kind of thought process. Deloading is, can be tough for those of us that really enjoy training. Uh, you don't get the typical reward that you get by moving heavy weights and attacking new PRs, personal records, um, pushing the body to failure. But there are certainly ways in which you can employ a deload phase and still suffer and feel that burn and that pain that we are addicted to as athletes and fitness enthusiasts. So again, my current model is strength, deload, hypertrophy, deload, repeat. Beyond the programming, within that, within the programming, you then have your split, which is referred to as a split, otherwise known as your micro rotation. Okay, so programming, macro, right? 16 weeks, your split or your micro rotation is broken down within a week, usually. That's how it's looked at. So your training split, meaning what are you doing on the days that you're going into the gym or into your training environment day to day throughout a week? Most splits encompass seven days. There are two, what I'd say, most frequently used two different types of splits. One I would refer to as a fixed model or a fixed split, meaning that what you train on any given day is fixed to that particular day of the week. So on Mondays is International Chest Day, which is pretty typical. Monday's chest, Tuesday's back, Wednesday is lower body, Thursday is whatever, a fixed model. Another option for a split is to make it rotational. So rather than dictated by day of the week, it's just day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. And that just moves throughout your week. That's the model that I use now. It's, it's the type that I've used for a while, and I like it for a few reasons. One is it allows us to account for the fact that life happens. Life's gonna get in the way. Even for the most disciplined and most dedicated individuals on the earth, life does not cooperate. So if I'm on a fixed split, and Tuesday is back day, and life gets in the way, Murphy shows up and I cannot train that day. And now it's Wednesday. Am I just bypassing my back training or am I now doing my Tuesday workout on Wednesday? And then, then I'm doing my Wednesday workout on Thursday. It just becomes more confusing for me to keep track of um, or I'm just gonna blow off Tuesday's workout entirely 
and now I'm just gonna stick to my schedule Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and I've missed my, in this example, my back training. So I prefer a rotational approach, day one, day two, day three, because it allocates for life getting in the way. Because if on Tuesday is day three and I cannot do my workout that day, well now Wednesday just became day three and I just continue to roll throughout the, the days, throughout the week. I also liked, I also like the rotational model because it allows you to add more days out in addition to, or more days above the number seven. So my current split is actually a 10 day rotation where it goes day one through four, day five is off, day six, seven, eight, nine, day 10 is off. Over a 10 day window, I'm rotating through the different workouts I have over 10 days as opposed to being limited by seven because there's only seven days in a week. Different approaches to them. This is again, just what I use and something that I certainly recommend at least attempting to see if it works within your current training program. The importance of programming, again, in general, uh, it really can't be undervalued. You know, but the, the first step in developing a program for those that are like, great, help me out with like, how do I do that? The first step as with a lot of things is identifying what the goal is or what the goals are. And I can tell you with certainty that the more goals we have, the more training goals we have, the more complex and sophisticated our program really needs to be. I'll break that down a little bit better. So we can generally say that there are four goal categories for fitness, for training. Power, strength, hypertrophy, and endurance. It's tough to get outside of those four lanes Certainly when we're talking performance, yes, there's an argument to be made about longevity having a place, which it absolutely does. Uh, aesthetics, so the way the body looks, meaning really getting after losing stored body fat as its own specific goal. So you can certainly add to those four. But when you look at most training goals, most of the methodologies and then tactics to get after those desired end states exist within those four categories. Power, strength, hypertrophy, and endurance. Power, the ability to move heavy things fast. That's what power is, right? Mass times acceleration. When you think of most athletes, they require a certain level of power to be successful to be able to move an object and or themselves as the object fast. Move heavy things fast, power. Strength, meaning how much weight can you move? And this certainly changes from movement to movement, exercise to exercise. When we talk about getting after strength, that being one of our goals, we're talking about how much weight, how much mass can you move. Not necessarily fixed to a speed, but it's certainly tied to that. But it is its own independent thing. Hypertrophy is really a fancy way of saying size. So increasing our muscle size. Think of bodybuilders. Bodybuilders job is to build muscle mass to look a certain way. Size and strength are certainly related. There's a relationship between size and strength. If I took a 300 pound individual and I took a 100 pound individual and they both had the exact same level of lifting experience and I put both of them under a squat rack to conduct a back squat, 99.999% of the time 
the 300 pound person is gonna be able to move more weight than the 100 pound person. Now that changes with specific training, certainly, but there is a relationship between size, hypertrophy, and strength. But there are also very different ways in which we train for those specific goals. And lastly, endurance being our ability to continuously go and go and go. So think of more cardiovascular, aerobic and anaerobic endurance capacity, right? Triathletes, marathon runners, soccer players, um, recreational runners or cyclists. Endurance is typically a priority for those individuals based on the profession or the hobby that they have, they want or need to be able to go and go and go for a really long time. If we decide to purely focus on power only, then our programming will not need to be as sophisticated and complex as someone who has decided that they need to be both powerful, strong, and have endurance. Or someone who's decided that they need or want big muscles, but they also need to be able to go for a really long time, endurance, and they want some explosiveness as well, power. When you start adding these different desired end states, these different goals into what it is we're trying to do, it is going to increase the complexity and the sophistication of the programming and it's also going to increase the need to be as disciplined and structured within our programming as possible. We have less margin for error when we are pursuing multiple training goals concurrently, okay? That is the value of programming. Really, regardless of the complexity, number of goals, I challenge and strongly recommend that you enter this training world or you are currently in it and you're looking to take things up another level prior to looking at exercise selection, supplementation, prior to looking at any of more of those details, Take a look at your program first. What does that look like? And dissect that from a macro perspective before dialing things in. A couple references to throw you away that I've certainly learned from over the years uh, is Charles Poliquin, who's a Canadian strength coach. Uh, Alexander Prelipin, who comes from the Soviet era. Uh, was a coach for the USSR um, Olympic Committee. And then Louis Simmons, the recently late Louis Simmons, who is the founder of Westside Barbell. And just their systematic and scientific approaches to programming are references that I would recommend to everybody.